Whether you're elderly and frail, or a young athlete, maintaining or increasing your muscle mass is one of the most important aspects of health. This is especially important as we age, because digestion tends to become weaker. While it is often suggested we consume more protein to build more muscle, one simple trick can make your body do much more with less total protein. I command the power of fire. Well, it's not a good idea. How do you like me now, huh? Well done. You've now just given murderous primitives the power of fire. While BCAAs are essentially a scam, one BCAA, leucine, plays a vital role in protein synthesis. Protein synthesis affects not only your muscles, but also your bones, skin, and even hair, making it something particularly of interest for those who want to avoid the symptoms of aging, and really for everyone on the planet. High quality proteins like whey protein isolate are very effective, but also very expensive. The main reason they're so effective is simply that they have a high leucine content. The lack of total protein is seldom an issue in people living in western countries today, but lacking enough leucine in a meal to fully stimulate protein synthesis is often a real problem. Many proteins, especially plant proteins, simply do not have enough leucine to stimulate this process, or else you simply don't eat enough at once to stimulate it, or due to poor digestion, you simply don't absorb enough in your meals to do so. Whey protein supplements do this very well, but there are issues. Some people don't tolerate it well, and it is expensive for a high quality source. And because it's expensive, it's also often faked. Cheap amino acids are added in, or even harmful substances. The lethal effects of melamine in dog food made the news. But shockingly, the fact that melamine has also been found in cheap protein supplements does not seem important at all to the media. Melamine has lots of nitrogen content, so it fools the typical protein content test then shows up on their tests as a protein. In reality, it is not only unusable by the body, but can also be very harmful to the liver. Unfortunately, we need to be careful of fakes today, especially when it comes to expensive ingredients. Leucine, on the other hand, is a very cheap amino acid that is very easy to produce. Just 3 to 5 grams of leucine with a meal is enough to ensure full protein synthesis will be triggered, though for the elderly and those with digestion issues, more than that might be helpful. Leucine also breaks down partly into HMB, which is sold as a very expensive muscle building supplement. There are some controversies with HMB, but while HMB does not seem to have a huge effect on young men just starting their training, it does seem to have a big effect on keeping muscle from decaying, especially in the elderly. For someone who's never worked out before, muscle wasting is simply not an issue, but it does become an issue with age, and it also becomes a very large issue when you become very big and very strong. The bigger you are, the more catabolic agents like myostatin come into play. Thankfully, leucine and HMB can actually block myostatin to some degree. They also elevate its muscle building counterpart, folostatin, which is also involved in both male and female fertility. While HMB might not have much effect on the muscle building process, one could speculate it might have a pronounced effect pushing past your body's limits later in your journey. And it certainly shows a lot of promise in the elderly when it comes to protecting their muscle from sarcopenia. While relatively small amounts of leucine become HMB after ingestion, HMB naturally occurs in even smaller amounts during exercise to prevent muscle loss. Another surprising fact about leucine is that it also stimulates protein synthesis even while fasting. This might seem absurd, but it is possible because the purpose of autophagy is to scavenge protein from the body in order to create new proteins. Protein building continues in the body while fasting, 
though it's reduced by about 33%. The new proteins created come from damaged old proteins that are recycled by the body through autophagy or through phagocytosis. Damaged proteins and dead and damaged cells are cleaned up by the body and repurposed. When you fast, you do lose some lean tissue, but once you break the fast, you gain it back and usually then some. This is probably mainly due to elevated growth hormone, but improved digestion and stomach acid from fasting also help a great deal in the long run, especially for the elderly. Experiments show that taking leucine fasted not only prevented all muscle loss on short fasts, but even created tiny amounts of new muscle. You are unlikely to gain much muscle while fasted, but it's possible this could prevent muscle loss on very long fasts of a week or more. While I have been meaning to test this out, I simply haven't been able to work up the enthusiasm to do a fast of that length. It would really also require a bit more controlled setting and a larger sample size, not to mention expensive tests to be useful. So that idea is just kind of on hold for now unless somehow it gets money and volunteers involved. Nonetheless, I have taken leucine while on shorter fasts, and I didn't have any bad results. I didn't get hungry, which is the main thing that I look for when I take a supplement. Whenever people ask me, does this break my fast? Does that break my fast? That's the real indicator. So if you take something and get hungry afterwards, it's breaking your fast. And a lot of times pills will do that because they have fillers in there that you don't know about, like rice flour and stuff like that. While many don't concern themselves much with muscle, this is a big mistake. Muscle tissue is the biggest sink for glucose and helps protect your liver from damage. And a damaged liver is a large part of what drives the damage of aging and disease. Now the liver. The liver, I believe, is one of the unsung heroes or unappreciated heroes when it comes to um, uh, human metabolism. And there are two processes I want to highlight, and that is the liver's ability to both make lipid and to make glycogen, the storage form of glucose. So it's uh, the liver's one of the one of the tricks the liver has to once li once ins uh, glucose has been pulled in, it will um, store it. So it's just a way to help um, buffer the glucose levels in the blood. If glucose levels are high, the liver can pull in some of that more than what it needs for its own energy demands. And then when glucose goes low, the liver can break that glycogen down and share it with the blood or with the body. So that's the de definitions there, the production of fat and the production of, of glycogen. Insulin, of course, as it has its hand in so many things, also has its hand in these events as well. In particular, it stimulates both of them. Insulin will both st stimulate the production of lipid and the production of glycogen. With insulin resistance in the liver, there's an interesting phenomenon, and it is reflective of the fact that insulin resistance is not just a global effect within the cell. It is not that every event that insulin used to do is not happening. And, and let me get into that, to, just to make that clear. When the liver is insulin resistant, lipogenesis is still activated when insulin comes knocking at the door, so to speak, when insulin binds its insulin receptor. So to make that clear, even if the liver is insulin resistant, insulin can still stimulate lipogenesis. In contrast, <clears throat> in the insulin resistant liver, insulin is less able to make glycogen. So it's less able to tell the liver to store glucose. And this loss of stimulating glycogenesis means we have a reduction. We actually end up insulin loses its ability to prevent the breakdown of glycogen. So now we have glycogenolysis. This event is disrupted in insulin resistance. And so now we have a liver that is supposed to be holding on to glucose. It's actually letting it go, but it's not supposed to. Remember, that's the pathology here. Insulin is trying to stimulate or it ought to be stimulating glucose uptake and storage. It's not working anymore. So the liver doesn't get the signal not to break down glycogen, and so it does. It's not being inhibited, the glycogenolysis. And this, of course, drives up blood glucose levels. So once again, if we look at this paradigm of the progression towards full-blown type 2 diabetes, with the liver being insulin resistant, we've pushed that a little further down the road. The patient has progressed, progressed 
a little further towards full-blown type 2 diabetes. So they're getting this mounting hyperglycemia. Keep in mind that exercise, especially lifting weights, also improves the NAD plus to NADH ratio of your cells. Many people are obsessed with taking NMN for this purpose, but the easiest way to do this is through plain old exercise. Fasting does so too, and to a very large degree, but of course fasting is a lot harder than using your credit card to get some NMN, or even some humble niacin a couple times a year. There's no real harm to taking these substances, but keep in mind they also are hard on the liver, so take an equal or greater amount of TMG or choline to help detoxify the liver. Also keep in mind, even 250 milligrams of niacin has been shown to restore NAD plus levels in the elderly, so don't buy into the hype and think you need large amounts of expensive supplements to get this effect. I've shown the study proving this in many videos, but because I still get people demanding proof, I'll post it here yet again. It's also important to note that it's leucine alone that drives muscle protein synthesis, not insulin as has been claimed by many. In experiments, when adding carbs to meals with varying levels of leucine, the leucine level alone was the only predictor of how much muscle protein synthesis would be stimulated. This is important to understand for those worried about a low-carb diet. All ancestral diets were low-carb diets worldwide. Our ancestors spent the last million years in an ice age where the worldwide temperature was similar to Canada or even Sweden for centuries at a time. Leucine also drives down blood sugar, which is another reason it may have use while fasting. It also can't be converted to sugar by the body. When you have trouble sleeping during a fast, it is due to high cortisol combined with poor metabolic health. This leads to sugar shooting into the bloodstream and keeping you awake. When this happens in the morning, we call it the dawn effect, but this can happen at any time of the day. If you take 500 to 1000 milligrams of leucine when this happens, right before bed, it should lower the blood sugar a bit and help you fall asleep. Another benefit of leucine is hunger suppression. This is also intriguing when it comes to fasting. I'm not sure my hunger went down when I experimented by taking one gram of leucine while I fasted, but it didn't seem to go up. And of course it could help stop with overeating. And this is probably one reason people tend to eat less on a keto diet. This effect requires action on the brain, which means the blood brain barrier must be crossed. That means taking leucine in one big dose with a meal would probably have the best effect. This also favors the practice of eating one meal a day as a potential way to suppress hunger. In summary, leucine is a useful supplement for maintaining lean body mass and for building muscle without having to consume excessive protein. It may also help with hunger, it may help with sleep during fasts, and it could possibly even prevent muscle wasting on long fasts. I've been taking 3 grams of leucine after my largest meal of the day to help boost protein synthesis. For the elderly, those who have trouble eating enough, and those on a vegan diet, 5 to 6 grams once or more a day with a meal could make a very big difference. The experts don't always have easy or cheap solutions for every problem. But if you look around, you can often find surprising solutions. Well, sir, I think it is time to turn this pledge drive over to Troy McClure. I can't keep up this pace forever. 